Welcome back to Show Me What I've Been Missing, your pop culture podcast that says, hey, look at that thing. Uh, I'm one of your hosts, Elizabeth Stanton, and with me is my other host, Chris Mack. And we are going through Sex in the City from start to finish. Chris has not really ever seen it in its entirety or or much of it. I've seen it far too many times. (laughs) Uh, And we're in season four, episode seven, Time and Punishment. Yes. Which is a play on crime and punishment, I'm assuming. Yeah. It's supposed to be? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Never read the book, but I'm assuming that's like I did, but I honestly be. forgot like <laughs> all of it. Uh, this episode was very fun for me to watch. Um, yeah. We'll get into why it was fun for me to watch. <laughs> but um, I, I think we got to talk about Samantha's story first because I have some, I, I have some yeah. things to, to say about it. And we should um, just get out of the way because it's yeah, such it's a super short, short, nothing yeah. character thing for yes. her uh so samantha is out on the street and hails a cab and Mm -hmm. one the one thing that'll really piss her off and i think anyone really is uh someone stealing her fucking cab so she the guy hops in and then but they're stopped at a stoplight she runs in and shoves the guy over and they share a cab and then they go fuck Here's first before uh, <laughs> anything else. I do want to say is I'm not a New Yorker, but I will say I think that is like the rudest fucking thing you can do the to somebody rudest. in New York. Yeah, like he would have been. It would have been nicer for him to like push her down, <laughs> right? Like and just like take her cab. Like clearly saw her hailing the shit and just hops right in yeah. as she's opening the door. Like, dude, that's a shitty move. Like, and if he if she like punched him in the face totally justified mm-hmm. i'm sorry like you could take that to the court of law i think any judge in new york would be like case closed you're a dick fuck out of here yeah <laughs> and you pay for the cab motherfucker <laughs> i hope she at least made a pay for the cab right well I, th- I think they ended up going to the same destination so but hopefully right. he paid yeah um so yeah post uh hookup he's like oh bt dub your bush is out of control <laughs> It's just, uh, so ridiculous. Oh man, here's the, you know what though, because but actually, I, I I it makes a lot of sense. Like to us now, it sounds ridiculous, but like right at this time, bald vagina was like the, right. the thing. It was like every every guy was wanting the no no hair down there at all. Mm-hmm. Um, I never was even at the time when that was like the thing. That was never for me. Like I need a little some hair there because yeah. like completely bald just does something to my brain that I don't like. No, so, that's probably good. Like, yeah, like, cause I, I wanna, I wanna know that I'm having sex with a woman that like is <laughs> like, like, yes, like at least my age. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Or like, mm-hmm. like, you know, I was a teenager at this time, but like, yeah, I need a little. I like, I always like a little bit, like a little bit of hair on there. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you know, it, of course, nobody likes the wild bush for either side. Yeah, but like, you know, trim it up. Don't just completely bald, cause that's just like, ugh, yeah. Remember in the El Los Angeles episode, Carrie got the Brazilian and was like. <laughs> So naked. Yeah, <laughs> I know, but like now they're shaving on the regular, which is yeah. hilarious because like they were clutching the pearls about it in mm-hmm. Los Angeles, and now it's like, oh, we do it regularly. Yeah. Um, and then Samantha is like all offended though. She's like, it's like the one week she's like not like it between waxes, which right. like that it can't, it can't be, be that, that out of yeah. control. It probably has like a little stubble, and he's just like, oh no, like yeah. Like, like oh it's ridiculous and then uh samantha tells him off for giving her shit about it and he she's like and i don't understand why men get on our case anyway because they're hairy all over hairy backs arms legs chest sure. you know shoulders sure. sometimes well that's why so i was you know like, that's why i was saying that too in the last episode we were talking about you know returning the old angle it's like that's why i was like i don't think a woman should ever have to return it to a dude because like there's hair everywhere sometimes hair catches things so like if you get a dude that ain't really wiping you might catch something that you ain't trying to catch up in there you know what i'm saying that's why you know (laughs) you ain't out here getting waxes i mean there's probably some men out there like bodybuilders and shit be getting waxed or like uh you know Mm -hmm. fitness models and stuff like that when they're doing shoes they go out and get waxes like that but most regular dude, especially no Wall Street guy, you know, he probably barely even shaving at the time. You yeah, know? clearly this guy. Because when he not, because he's like, I, what can I do to like earn your forgiveness? And she's like, and she gives him a little shave, and then he's like, oh, sick, my dick looks bigger. 
again, uh, two things wrong with that. One, way too trusting with a woman with a razor at your balls. like Especially one who's mad at you. Not even, well, that, great point, by the way. Didn't even think about that. Just the idea that, like, I was there just was saying that because, like, she doesn't know how to navigate that area. Like, yeah, she's seen a lot of sets of balls. She's mm-hmm. been around the area a lot, but, like, there's still a certain finesse that you gotta have. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, I've seen a lot of vaginas, but I'm not, like, ready to go in and, like, shave trim, it or trim, trim anything. Brown. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm not, yeah, I'm not, like, a crap enough to know that. You know what I mean? It's like, that's so... I barely so, know how to... But, that's what i'm saying (laughs) it's hard and i have one (laughs) yeah it's hard man so you know i don't know why he was just like oh yeah you can just shave my balls like i'm sorry that wasn't an accurate scene because it would have been like several nicks like (laughs) i know most girls would just be like oh you just you just go at it you don't have to be no no finesse is needed like (laughs) i feel like most women would just like have the razor like right to the (laughs) ball he's like ah what are you doing (laughs) yeah i hate like if I could afford to do like the full like electrolysis on like sure. my legs and that and like bikini line and all sure. that stuff, oh, I would I would happily pay all that money and take all that time to never have to just even shave my legs again. It's such a fucking pain in the ass. And I'm I tall. That. I have a lot of leg. It's like God damn it. It's so annoying. <laughs> I feel that. Yeah. I yeah. I, that wouldn't be fun. It doesn't. Say, I mean, I'm trying to think of that like for a guy because I heard the, the you know. I wouldn't mm. even want to do a waxy down there. So I definitely don't want to do like a laser removal or like. No, I've done a bikini wax type thing like yeah. once or twice and I am sensitive to it and it hurts and I don't want to. I bet. <laughs> I do. Bet. The the most I'll do now is um, uh, there's like Veet, which is like Nair basically. Mm. And I'll do that. And that's doesn't hurt or anything like that it smells like burning hair i'm not gonna lie because you're basically chemically burning off right right yeah so the bathroom smells a little funky for you know a a little bit um and that's plenty to like get things to like swimsuit sure sure right you're like i'm in mixed company (laughs) yeah um the the only good thing about losing hair with chemo was uh-huh. you lose hair everywhere as it turns out <laughs> did they give you a merkin no but okay the but when i say everywhere you you caught the drift i do mean yeah that's everywhere. what i was like that's what i asked i was like because i know like for some people like for patients that have like alopecia or like they yeah, yeah, are yeah. going through chemo so that that sometimes that's presented as an option like if they feel weird yeah. without their body hair you can get a merkin for those who don't know what a merkin is, it's basically fake pubic hair. It's like a yeah, it's like, it's a, a, it's wig like a, for, a wig, wig for, for your, your stuff. Your junk. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm telling you, I for a hot minute. Also, I was like, terrible name for a, yeah. a pubic hair region wig. I feel merkin. like it's from medieval times or something, but I could be wrong. It sounds like a a, a monster that no one's supposed to say. <laughs> the, like, the, the merkin, merkin is the merkin. back. <laughs> if you're not a good kid, the merkin will come and get you. <laughs> but I'm telling you, I was like so close to like perhaps i should quit my entire career as it is dedicate my life to science to figure out how we can pinpoint the hair loss part of chemo yeah. but to only do from like your armpits down if you so choose if you that or like wherever you localize it somehow because it was i was like <laughs> Holy shit, this is the great. amount of research that would have to go into that. Oh my God. Like yeah, that's if, some shit we're not gonna see for like 200 years, man. <laughs> no, if if scientists can invent boner pills for dudes, sure. somebody no, can I'm take not saying, the time. I'm not saying it can't be done. I'm just saying we'll never see it in our lifetime because not if my dream, not if I quit ex- right here, right can now. Can you imagine? Dude, and here's the thing: the <laughs> fucked up thing about it is. If that was the thing, no you know rich price. people are gonna be going. Rich people are gonna go and be like, "Let me just go get chemo real quick so I can get rid of this." Give my legs. Like, I don't need, don't even need it because they're not going through cancer or that. They're just gonna go get like it would be a chemo spa, okay? People right. Chemo but well, spa. no the 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 science part of it is f- figuring out a the localization and b just the part that is that side effect without doing any of the other chemical damage to your body that chemotherapy does. Again, chemo spas. <laughs> It's it it's a uh, it's a uh, as stupid as uh, it sounds, but you know, for science, for the good of of man and woman kind, and it's not non-binary stupid. kind, whoever whoever would like. Listen, to listen, listen. Not listen. have to shave again. There are people out there 
who go to a spa and get their face poked so much that it bleeds and then I they know. rub the blood all over their face and call oh, it a I vampire know. facial. If you don't think that's stupid, fucking chemo body hair removal is not stupid. It's going to be a mm-hmm. thing at some point. I'm telling you. Like, and it all probably, and the only place we can make that happen is probably here in Los Angeles. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's just stay here. If you ever want that to happen, just stay here. It'll be it. Right. Yeah. So that's not stupid at all. Don't even, that's probably a brilliant idea. Some, somebody's going to watch this and be like, hmm. And if you do, I would like credit on the uh, report. When no, you... fuck credit. I need money. I need two percent of all profits. Yes, you're right. I'm an idiot. Yes, don't don't say. I was say... doing it for the good of, of the world. No, this is never this do is that. my um no, my you live in a capitalist advice. society. You can you can help the world and still make a profit. Okay, it's okay. Sure. Nobody will hate you for it. I'm not gonna be as bad as the fucking EpiPen guy, but I would like a little money. Yeah. I'm not gonna try to buy the. That's why I said two percent. Two percent. It's like, yeah. hey, just to let just just remember that you got the idea for me, so make sure you pay it forward. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you executed it, so you get ninety eight percent of it. I just need two percent because like, yeah, I, I like I'm not gonna try to buy head. the one off Wu Tang album that he bought with his ill gotten EpiPen money or was it diabetes medication? I think it's both. I don't know. He loves- the point is, the guy's a piece of shit, and I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> I just want a little cash. <laughs> Martin oh. Shirley, that's his name. So I want to talk about this because okay. I'm, I'm, it's, it's concerning me a little bit. Um, like I know that Samantha's character is supposed to be like the more free spirit, the more mm-hmm. open, the like mm-hmm. all this other stuff. But I'm just kind of, it seems like right now they're kind of giving her like a one note character. Like yeah. she's just the slut of the group. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like her yeah. again with this guy, meeting him and, you know, he steals her cab and then the next thing you know, they're fucking. It's like, and then even in the last episode, it's just like, she's just like quick to fuck all these guys. It's like, you know, at least beforehand, there was like, you know, some kind of like little you know, guys took her out on dates and things of that nature. Or like, there was like a little back and forth with the guy, you know what I'm saying? And when she beat mm-hmm. him, you know, here and there before they got there. And now it's just like, oh, she meets the guy straight to bed. And it's like, I don't really like that for her character because it's not really her. They're just like, mm-hmm. it's like, it's like they don't know what to do with her. So they're just yeah. like, nah, she's just the slut of the group. We're just I'm- put her in some man's bed and then we'll take care of the rest and there'll be a punchline and it's and her right. punchline is only for a joke there's no character development yeah yeah and that's that's a totally uh, fair assessment and uh analysis of what's happening with her right now she will get more development okay. as this season and a few more seasons and and kind of the back half of the series okay we get a little more of her as okay. a real character and not just like a total punchline comic relief you know okay. sex character it get it, it gets better for samantha in terms okay. of uh, uh characterization i think which is why it's such a shame that she gets she uh didn't want to be part of the reboot <laughs> i get it, but right. i totally get why i get it when you get to the when we get to the reboot buddy you're yeah. gonna be like she's the, you know maybe. they'll probably bring her back for the next season but uh oh no she's done done she oh, yeah. said she said nay <laughs> yeah from what i heard uh, as far as the the the, the reboot um yeah. not so great but no if her Overall. her refusing to do it on the grounds of like quality is a real like you're the only bitch in this house i ever respected type of thing <laughs> yeah because <laughs> it's it's uh yeah yep a lot of strange choices Yep, but yep, yep. That's down the line. All right. Uh, who should we talk about next? Do I do Charlotte? Yes, I do yeah. want to because uh, this is this is something that I, I really want to talk about. Oh yeah. Yes. Bring us so, in. Uh, at uh, brunch, Charlotte yes. brings up the fact that she wants to quit her job, and at first mm-hmm. they're like, "Oh, do you want to switch galleries?" And she says, "No." She is going to just quit working entirely. Yeah. And it's something Trey suggested. And she and they're like, eh. and she's like, no, no, I'm driving myself crazy at the gallery. And she thinks there's so much more she could do with her life with you know, because she doesn't want to become a mom. Mm-hmm. And they're redoing the apartment and everything. And she's kind of wanting to live this sort of like life of of leisure because she's like i want to go to color me mine and paint pottery in the middle of the day which yeah i do too sure but you <laughs> it's ridiculous um and she and then she kind of confidently insists that's what she wants to do because the other girls are like you know uh don't don't necessarily do that 
Um, and Samantha's like, well, remember, once you quit, there are girls coming up behind you who are younger and ruthless. And to kick off this, this discussion, to me, it's not just that, like, oh, there are young up-and-comers behind her, which that's true of any job, whatever. Yeah, any job, yeah. You know, if she quits and then wants to go back, she lost, it's, it's so, there's so many studies that prove it, like, women who leave the workforce either by choice, you know, to do motherhood or uh, be a caretaker sure. all these things that we tend to force women into doing in the first place oh it's a million times harder for them to catch up the way men are they're treated differently for doing it and then the thing that tweaked my brain was when trey suggested it now trey is not a bad guy i no. don't and i don't think in like the truly like abusive bad sense but if you are and they're at a level where it doesn't necessarily impact her quite the same way because she's got maybe her own money or family money and kind of ways to escape but mm -hmm. if a dude is like I think you should stop working and only rely on me for income and you could be a stay-at-home wife it's such a fucking trap that so many women get like pulled into or almost pulled into it's <sighs> dangerous and, and men too, frankly men too, everybody should be able to have their own income. Okay, see, but that's, means of I, escape. No, that's a, that's such a, that's such a, that's such a survivalist way of looking at it. I understand. Because this is the but, way you, like, if you're in the relation, I'm not saying that you're not wrong. Yes, in some ways you are wrong. There are some people out there who make their spouses give up their careers and their jobs as a sense of control. But mm -hmm. we're looking at a person like, so we're looking at in this case of Charlotte and Trey. Trey's not a kind of person that controls. No. If anything, he's more controlled by Charlotte than true, true. the other. So he might've suggested it, but it's really was the choice that she made. And to be honest with you, if you're a woman who actively makes that choice, you will be fulfilled through that life. It's like the fear of, you yeah, you're, not, you, you are admittedly go taking back. a much like, more positive. It's not, a, yeah, because like the whole look fear at it, of like, but what if you want to get back into it? You're not going to get back into it because if you made the choice to actively uh, uh, be uh, a, mo a mother and like raise a family and be a stay at home mom and you have somebody that doesn't make you feel like shit about it and take care mm -hmm, of you, mm -hmm. then you're going to be fulfilled, period. Yeah. Also, too, uh, people don't understand like when it comes to building families and raising children. So, like, I don't have any children, but the first five to seven years of a child's life are so fucking important like oh i know that yeah. bonding you need yeah. you they need you there they need you to know that they can rely on you and build trust and to make build security within them so mm -hmm. they can grow up with that kind of security and take that out into the world and and be successful and to be a, a person to decide to stay home and be in those formative years it's a huge uh, uh choice to make but it's also a very noble choice to make because yeah those kids do they need those somebody around because and you think about it too somebody like charlotte and somebody like trey if she doesn't uh if she doesn't um quit her job or neither one of them quits her job they're both going to be super busy working all the mm -hmm. time so there's not going to be anybody there to nurture them so she's going to this child he she whatever mm -hmm. is going to be raised by what maids or butlers nannies. or some nannies yeah. or something like that that's not those aren't that's not the way a child to be raised yes it does take a village but like your your kids need you as well yeah. and the fact that like so many people especially in this 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 world of like the feminist movement and stuff like that it's like women beat down other women for like deciding to be stay a hell mom but it's mm -hmm. like yeah unless uh, like i said if a guy is forcing you like if mm -hmm. you didn't want to quit your job and like some guys like well if we want to be to get like made some like alternate or you know mm -hmm. ultimatum or some mm -hmm. shit like that i can totally understand but like clearly her and trey talked about this because she came in very confident and she only she actually didn't see... come in all that confident <laughs> well because she because she knows how she, she knows how they're gonna miranda react. was gonna react to yeah. it one way you know mm -hmm. samantha's gonna react to it the mm -hmm. same way and you know fucking carries out they're all these judgmental bitches who already low-key have a little bit of like animosity towards her for being married like let's mm -hmm. be honest like they got a little jealous and on top of that like the fact that she's like ready to quit her job like it wasn't even about her quitting her job it was the idea that like she's just so happy like they were like so adverse to her happiness that she mm -hmm. would be even be willing to give up her career to be in it you know what i'm saying yeah of course she was on the fence of course because it is a big you know choice to make but to judge her and make her feel like shit about it like that's not very feminist for one and two it's like just not cool as a as a friend yeah no like i i think their judgment 
as part of your point is I think the judgment is more on the fact that she's sort of even less the motherhood thing which I like I agree like if you know if you can take the time off to sure. be there in those formative years it's so important like uh I know my mom she didn't do like full career stuff but she's always been happier that she like she was there for that time period and stuff like that Sure. And it's and it's hard. Don't get me wrong. It's hard to do that as a parent. Uh, but you know, and parents need to work. And like I said, they're at an economic level where her quitting is a not going sure. to impact her financially in theory because she could probably like get out if she needed to. To I'm picturing Trey's family being extra crazy and like really fucking her over, which is not the case. But um, right. I think it's the the I think what threw them for a loop was less than her being like I want to focus on motherhood I think it was the like color me mine like life of leisure where it's like I don't think they understood that maybe she would feel fulfilled by these sort of leisure things and she said she's gonna also volunteer and things like that which is definitely like a good thing and fulfilling and frankly some of those volunteer boards can take up a lot of time uh, and be a full-time job because she's going to volunteer at like Trey's hospital on their like yeah. uh, uh, children AIDS uh, department and things like that. And um, and like I agree with the scene where she's irritated that Miranda especially was so judgmental on her because yeah. Charlotte's not wrong. It, it It is what the point of the movement was. It is choice and she's choosing her choice to yeah. do this uh, to quit leave the workforce and focus on being just a wife a stay-at-home wife and hopefully eventually mom yeah um and she's definitely not wrong in that i think um i i think i just i've read too many horror stories frankly of like you know women who needed to like escape situations and like i said they're at an economic level where it doesn't not happen but it's much easier for her to get out of a bad situation if she needed to and there sure. like i think i've mentioned it before but i've you know read like story you know people have written in things and articles where their grandmas were like oh like i'm so happy you know you found so and so and then the grandma pulls them aside and is like make sure you have a secret bank account that he doesn't know about because you never you just never know and like that's kind of the unfortunate scary part of being a woman and i don't think the show is addressing that in this way at sure. all it's just like it was top of my mind when i watched it i was like what if charlotte needs to flee like <laughs> and, yeah but, but i don't think Trey's she would ever not need to flee. Kind of, yeah and she's not i know like Trey's and not i think kind that's, of guy. Saying, that's just something i feel like that's something you only need a if you don't think that you're that the relationship's gonna work like i said that's like a very survival instinct way of thinking like to have a separate bank account stuff like that it's like that, Cause that's the whole point of it. Like, mm-hmm. I, if you're going to get married, you're deciding to you should be put able all to trust in. the person. Yeah. So if you don't yeah. feel like you can do that, if you feel like you need to have a secret bank account or like have an escape plan and a fucking go bag in case it goes wrong, then you probably shouldn't be married. And that's I a think fair point. Yeah. Somebody like Charlotte and their relationship, like she's clearly puts her trust and faith yeah. in their relationship. You know, they had some little rough patches, but clearly it's it's you know, mm. fi- they're finding their way through it. So you know, for her to put her trust in him, that's like a beautiful thing. And that means like, then that's, that, like, that's, I think that's what's missing from a lot of relationships because we all are like in mm-hmm. this like survival mode. And it's like, we're all trying to like live in the what if, but it's like, if you're going to make that commitment, it's a full commitment, man. Like it's, you can't have those uh, what if, because if you have the what if, staying, you're, you're saying, but you're opening a couple the room. hundred bucks in a pair of shoes, but you're opening wear. the room. You're t- opening, tuck it in the back of the closet. You open a room for that negative, t- that negative energy to come in. You can't have that mindset. Like you gotta, that's if you have that mindset with anybody you're with, then it's either a you or you don't trust that person. So maybe you should be like, if that, if that's even an inkling in your head of like a what if, then you should probably reassess the relationship. Period. Probably. Prior. And I'm just saying, sometimes. Guys get too comfortable. And again, we never Masks know. slip and we never things know. change. But you know what, though? That's like, I don't think so because I feel like if you give, if you're dating somebody long enough, they're going to reveal who they are to you. It's just you have to be awake enough to see it. Because mm-hmm. if you, because a lot of times you too, uh, us as people in relationships, we fall in, in love with the idea of who we want a person to be and not who they actually are. And then when they show us who they really are, 
we get mad at ourselves for not seeing it, but it's like it was always there. So you can't fall Sometimes, in love with the idea. Of but there, person. there is evidence for like love bombing and things like that, where sure they they get the abusers get you get you comfortable and then slowly start cutting you off. And unfortunately, one of the chief and earliest cutoffs is stop working. And then it's right. stop seeing your friends, and then it's stop yes, but seeing that's your family, it's, and that. But I, again, I don't think Trey's going down this path. I'm no, trying to put that on Trey, but it's just it's so common because it they hide it very well until it's it starts to come out. It's, it's not that common. common. It's, it's not that common. It's, it's not that common. common. I know I have I've, I have friends that are divorce lawyers. It's not that common. It's really not that common when it comes to the, living at home and stuff like that. It's not always about control. It's not always about manipulation and all that stuff. That's just shit that people say get, get women to be in the workforce, to get them Ooh. scared to be in the workforce and be career oriented. So that way they can spend more money and keep our economy alive. That's I really disagree. all it's about. I disagree very Trust heavily. Trust me, 80%, 80% of the spending in this, com- in this country is women. And the only way you guys are spending money is if you're miserable. So they can keep you miserable with lies like, oh, no. You didn't want to control you? No, no. Oh, yeah. We're, oh, yeah. No. Oh, yeah. Oh, buddy, yeah. buddy. Oh, yeah. No. Oh, yeah. It doesn't it is... happen that often, trust me. There's not a lot, it's not like, it's not like you, 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 people thinking it's like, oh, it's like 60% of men or 60 to 70% of men are trying to control their women. It ain't like that. Trust me. And plus, maybe thing, you're most not men actively don't even make trying it. to, but and most there's... men don't make enough money to even suggest that to a woman to say oh i'll you stay at home and be a stay home mom like our economy ain't even set up that way most men the average no i agree the economy is 50 to sixty thousand a year so yeah. you ain't who's who's living off of six unless you live out in fucking bumfuck arkansas who's making sixty thousand a year and paying for you know a wife yourself and kids it ain't gonna happen it's more common than you think and everybody should read the book why does he do that which is a legit serious book about no i'm dead serious it's a book about how abuse uh, men become abusers and abuse happens and it's not it's not an all men thing it's i'm not trying to do that but no i know it's uh it's not all men but a lot of them um but no i don't even think it's a lot it's very few buddy that's like saying that's like that's like saying all women use sex as a weapon do all women use sex their sex as a weapon but i think so and it's like and they can't even say most women use their sex as a weapon because they don't no, no, it's a it's, very small. It's a very small group of people because that I guarantee you the same amount of men that manipulate their spouses and you know significant others. I bet you there's probably the equal amounts in the women's side. It's not that many. If that were the case, people wouldn't still be getting married so much these days. It's everybody be so fucking much single. more complicated. <laughs> everybody be telling you. I'm tell, I just everybody should read the book. Why does he read do the that? book? But it's I'm a just little eye opening. It's eye opening for everybody. That's just. That's I opening opening for my boy. That's that's survival mode, man. We're not we're not cavemen living in fucking caves anymore. We gotta we've evolved beyond that. We have not. <laughs> in many ways, we have not. <laughs> well, but Trey and Trey and Charlotte have. Trey and Charlotte have, and and to Charlotte's point, when she calls and argues with Miranda, um, Miranda is caught off guard. But Miranda's always so judgmental that she's always shocked when people are like annoyed with how she acts. Um, yes. But it's, uh, like I said, it's, you know, Charlotte's not wrong in that, you, you know, support, you, the choice is there and the, and all, all of those choices are valid. If you want to be a stay-at-home mom or just stay-at-home wife, yeah. that is fine. If you want to work, that is fine. Like, and both those choices should be a hundred percent respected because it's, that's the whole point is to be able to choose between those things. Like, yeah. And, or do both, you know, if you want, or do both for a little while or some combo or what, you know, whatever, instead of part of the problem was we were forced to only do one thing or the other and not have any of these options that are frankly always more available to men. And societally, you know, men are sort of driven honestly to work and not given the option to stay home the same way women are, which that's problematic in and of itself too. The patriarchy hurts everybody. <laughs> it's true. Patriarchy, man. Don't you fucking laugh at me about that's the patriarchy, not, young man. I swear, a, I swear to God. I swear to God. Well, no, that, it's bad. It, that, that's how we get toxic masculinity and all the, all the shit. Not a real thing. Bruh. 
toxic masculinity is not really because if that's the case then there's such thing as toxic femininity but yeah we don't talk is. about that there isn't it's called there toxic is. it's just toxic period like it's just toxic humans that's really no there's no like you know what i mean just because if a woman's doing it you can't call it toxic femininity you know what i mean it's just toxic it's different for it takes different forms it's not the exact same thing no toxic manipulation is manipulation if well, I'm, I'm, talking, manipulate- I'm not talking about the mani- manipulation part i'm talking about the the masculine like uh, prison of things that for makes men feel like they have to act and behave certain ways same thing for women that f- expectations they make you think you have to act or behave certain ways i don't i'm not talking about manipulation or relationships sure. or things like that i'm just talking about behavior in general their toxic masculinity is is those things like where it gets to the point of like incels and all that shit that where they're it's all rewired wrong and same thing for women where they think they may like the sort of the pick me girl is kind of a toxic femininity thing where they're not they're almost pushing down enjoying being a woman and being like i'm one of the guys i'm it's a whole like we don't really have time to get into this. <laughs> fair enough <laughs> but uh it's it's uh it's it's these structures trap uh, have trapped us for too long and we are slowly slowly breaking out of them and they they do impact and hurt everybody for the worse. The they, the way things have been have not been good. Slowly they are changing, and this is one of those kind of changing things where I yeah, mean, I think this era was like sure you know how you know I how am I trying to say this? It was I think there was there 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 it ebbs and flows these kind of divides that I've seen I've seen it recently too where it's like you know being a working woman or a working parent is the ideal and you should do that and you can have it all which you know men men miss out on quote unquote men are never asked if they can have it all it's just expected that they will have a job and a family but that's because most of the family care is off put to women now it's better if both parents are involved like you're saying you know in those formative years and things like that but unfortunately the way things are structured in america is you can barely fucking afford to even have the kid in the first place let alone be around for it those formative years that's a whole other set of problems that we don't have time to get into but the long and short of it is charlotte continues on her journey and excuse me interviews her replacement um who she finds it's basically her (laughs) yeah she basically (laughs) finds her young her (laughs) young her which is like actually if you think about it that's not a bad idea because you know i guess you know in the later if she does decide to come back you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like basically, she just has her working mm-hmm. for it. Be like, hey, I'm I'm already this first person. I already know what I'm doing. Years of experience. Like, let's do it. Yeah. Um, or maybe not. I don't know. Because like, you know, shit changes through the years. So. Mm-hmm. And she like and she likes the girl that she but she does um. And the last uh, scene um, what do you call it uh, the the woman the younger. <laughs> gallery runner is like oh maybe we should put this pain over here and it's like you're 22 what do you know <laughs> flips out at her i mean she's not wrong 22 is not you know yeah your brain's i don't know not too many people me. yeah yeah i don't know too many sure. people that really knows what's going um, on in life like she probably was fresh out of college yeah you know or probably still about to graduate like about to graduate college you know yeah which gallery uh, running a gallery at 22 i'm like is that a thing i, I don't i don't know I, the yeah art. i was wondering that i don't too. know like, the art like, world that way so but i feel like that, that that's i don't think that that's a thing i feel like they, that probably happens like maybe through uh maybe like nepotism or or, or, something or internships like that. and things like yeah, that. yeah maybe yeah. yeah but i i think even as an intern you probably have to like be an intern for many years like a while yeah yeah like she would probably if it was an intern thing she'd probably be an intern from like 22 to like damn near 30 before also she side note unpaid internships are a scam because yeah, it's, it's bullshit only those bullshit. who can afford to do it are able to do it and that's that's bullshit excludes a whole whole economic classes and it actually infamously pissed off my grandpa when i me and a couple of cousins explained to him one time we were all doing different internships yeah and he was and he's a, a farmer from canada and then was also like a manager of uh oh, i forget what the business did but the management things like that so he was like I don't understand. You go in and you work for them eight hours a day. Yeah. And they don't pay you to do it. <laughs> no, you're getting experience. He's like, I don't care if you're getting experience. You're telling me you show up for work for eight hours a day. Yeah. 
give them your time. Yeah. They don't pay you any money. Yeah. And we're like, yeah, that's, that's how it works. It's, you know, it's good. It goes on resumes. He's like, that is utterly ridiculous. He was not happy about it. Under- Unpaid internships. Yeah, he but was that's, still alive. Grandpa was fighting for the good, baby. It's it, but <laughs> it is, it's, it's dumb, but it's also like it's it's a double edged sword because you kind of have to do in for certain jobs you do have to do an mm-hmm. internship because like they want you to have the experience, but you can't really get any experience because nobody's gonna hire you. So mm-hmm. what's the next best thing? You have to work for free for yeah. you know a few months or a couple of years or whatever you know and to, to at least get the experience so then when you actually do go for a job mm-hmm. you can get it and those times too uh when you do internships you pretty much uh get the job because they usually hire the time, internally yeah, yeah. yeah internally yeah. after you do the internship because it's like a little trial period it's a definite leg up some people i work with now have been uh interns or in the page program yeah that's hints a hint to where i work Shh, don't tell anyone <laughs> um and or uh, I actually hired, I was the intern coordinator in the Tate Vault where I used to work at an old job and I hired, who's now, she's now my best friend and <laughs> has a probably even cooler job than I do. Um, but she was an intern and I hired her or I didn't hire, but I, my, my, my boss was like, oh, we need more PA production assistants now. I said, oh, go with her. She's great. And we've leveled up sort of simultaneously ever since right alongside each other. Um, Fun fact, if you're an intern, a thank you note's an excellent way to stand out in the crowd. Um, But actually the, both uh, jobs, the earlier job used to do unpaid internships. And then I, I think some rules in California changed and now they are required to do paid internships. I believe. I mean, they should at least pay you like minimum minimum wage, wage. You know I mean? like minimum wage like, even if you only work there three months to get the experience give, yeah give some at least minimum wage fucking money yeah Bullshit. something yeah but or like a, like a weekly like even if it's like a stipend yeah just be like hey for something. 250 bucks a week you work yeah yeah that's not terrible or not great but it's not terrible this is something it looks like they can like buy some groceries or something yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean like and they ain't even pay, pay bills, but at least they can afford to like eat. Yeah. For the, whatever, Something. however long they gotta work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um. So yeah, sorry, R- rant over on that. But uh, Charlotte leaves that. the gallery, ready to start her new life of. I don't want to call it a life of leisure. I feel like they kind of painted no, that that's, way they, because they, in, I a, think they in a weird way in the show. That way because she's rich, like she's already yeah. she comes from money. Trey comes from money, so they mm-hmm. just think they're like she's quitting her job to just be like you know, this waspy yeah. stay at home, drinking margaritas by mm-hmm. the pool, have a kid and like let the nanny take care of him yeah, kind yeah. of thing, which is not why she's quitting. She's quitting to like be there. She wants to be actually, actively involved. Actively, yeah, yeah involved in good. the child's life. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. that's that. I think that's another that's another reason why I was like so upset that they were judging her because it's like mm-hmm. they, you know, they. I think they all kind of always kind of had that little chip on their shoulder about Charlotte's situation yeah. because of where and who she's come from, which is always why she kind of feels separate from the group. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And also, at the end of the day, no one really wants to work. Exactly. <laughs> listen, listen. If we, if somebody paid us like a hundred grand a year to do whatever the fuck we wanted, who wouldn't take that job? Yeah. I don't care who. I don't care what career you have or what career you ever wanted. Even if you have your dream job, if you're telling mm-hmm. me that I can do nothing and make a hundred grand a yeah. year and do whatever I want throughout yeah. the year, and then that, and that's all I'm, I have to do. Who's not taking that deal? And fun fact. The, the universal basic income has been bandied about and experimented with in several places and there are people are always like oh all you're gonna get is lazy loafers no people are like oh i can pay my bills and shit and work and then still spend money and boost the economy that way and they're like it's not a bad thing so if you give people an extra thousand bucks a month they get way more shit done Oh, they've already proven it. These studies yeah. in Europe and shit like that, of like paying people more or having them work less days, and yeah. they've come back. Like that, I think it's it's not, maybe not Switzerland or somewhere. It's, is it Sweden? Sweden, yeah, they do like they're yeah. definitely doing like four day work weeks, and mm-hmm. product productivity has like tripled. There's <laughs> actually the workforce. Bill, there's actually a bill here in California to propose a four day work week. At same rate, you would not lose any money. You would still be paid as if you were doing a forty hour, you know, five day work. Yeah. work week um so i don't know if that's gonna get anywhere but well i'll tell you what 
interesting if it does if it does get implemented um these restaurants are about to get a hell of a lot more money because people are gonna be brunching the shit out of them right? <laughs> LA, I, dude, 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 I can finally be, live my I, sex in the city dreams yeah. and brunch all the goddamn time like they do four day work week shit brunch is gonna be lit but then you can have people like do side hustles or create things or just or be not fucking miserable would be a yeah. nice change of pace for everybody i think we'd all like that yeah. um capitalism's a goddamn scam oh man but that would be better capitalism though at least we'd be happy at least we'd be too dumb to know that we're still getting screwed you know what i mean like, we'd be too like <laughs> at, at, in bliss to know that we're getting screwed because yeah. gas would still be six dollars a gallon but fuck we'd be like happier dropping. to pay it i know yeah, yeah. it has it has dropped enough. thank god Woo, 10 cents baby listen it ain't much but it's it's enough god damn it <laughs> <laughs> but real funny gas price story um so i some places have had people put stickers with joe biden saying i did that to the you know with the gas prices it's not first of all the president does not determine the fucking gas prices the corporations that you're everyone is slavishly uh addicted to and myself included i'm not immune or above it I'm yeah we saying, all got guys i'm just yeah. saying know who to blame when it comes to right. it was not joe biden's fault that the fucking gas prices went up maybe blame a country that invaded another country anyway Dude, it would be crazy if 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 the president could decide gas prices right? like you know how many you know how many presidents would have been assassinated <laughs> right if they control the gas prices we or, have so there's only been what like f- like four presidents that have been assassinated we'd be like 25 of them that have been or we'd have like presidents for life because they've made gas like 25 cents a gallon <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we'd have like, Roosevelt, though. Just yeah, like, somebody, just they'd just repeal nonstop. that amendment and be like, yeah. just let him stay in. Listen, let me tell you gas. something. The first president that makes like gas like a dollar a gallon, he's yeah. forever the president. president I don't for, care. Life. for life, be like, we never want this guy out of office. Be. But my, uh, my <laughs> uncle uh, in Arizona, he saw the, st- the sticker on the gas pump and ripped it off. And then w- was like, wait a minute, they're on all these. He fucking walked around and took them all off the pumps. Rock on, Uncle Dennis. Rock on. Makes, fight. Listen, it fight in the good fight, my friend. It makes sense to me. Yep. Anyway. All righty. So uh, should we go with Miranda, Miranda? story? I mean, it's like super It's quick. sort of intertwined into things, but yeah. um, so while Charlotte and Miranda are arguing about Charlotte feeling judged and Miranda trying to be like, I'm not judging, but just like, you know, it's cool that you want to do it. Just, like trying to get up. She's trying to go to work, ironically enough. Like, yeah. If out of the shower while Charlotte's bitching at her at eight in the morning. <laughs> Listen, she, I, I'm actually proud of Charlotte for actually standing up to Miranda. Yeah. I do think they kick her around a little bit a lot. Yeah. And she doesn't ever really stand up for herself. She just kind of takes it or just mm-hmm. like, you know, moves on. But like, I'm glad she said something because like, regardless yeah. of if Miranda wasn't entirely judging, but there was some judgment there. And like, it shouldn't be like, you're supposed to be friends and friends wouldn't do that. Yeah. Like if I, if I if I come to you as a friend and say this is what I want to do, the best you should do be like, are you sure? And if I say I'm yeah. sure, then leave it at that. Don't sit there and be like, okay, mm-hmm. that's bullshit. If you want to, yeah, yeah, unless it's like something ridiculous, and I don't say right, like, yeah, this ain't ridiculous. She has a good husband that loves her, and mm-hmm. she's fine with money. He's fine with money. Like it's yeah. not like, you know, she's going to go live in an outhouse somewhere. You right. Know they're I mean? they're in an economic. Uh, class where right it's yeah almost, the bits don't even need to work almost <laughs> on the fact that she was yeah. working and had a job that you know saying in fact already, it's beneficial hey. to a younger person for her to get out of the workforce exactly yeah let somebody so, who isn't rich yeah get a job yeah anyway. job creator anyway um so they get to finish with their argument and somehow miranda tweaks her neck like super bad so bad yeah. she like is collapsed on the floor of her bathroom yeah <laughs> which is insane so she like manages to call carrie yeah and begs her to come over and carrie does apparently have a meeting she has to go to like yeah but she doesn't really get that out on the phone so she asks aiden who we'll get to in a bit yeah to go over and help her and like you know carrie has like a spare set of keys for her and stuff like that and yeah. so, so poor poor aiden and poor miranda this this is a funny scene i do love yeah. this because yeah. Aiden's, Aiden's such a good, sweet guy, though, at the end, the end of the day. He, and she's like, oh, don't let him make it. He's like, okay, okay. He's like avoiding his eyes. And he gets her a towel to kind of cover her back and, like, manages to lift her up. Thank God he's a big dude, right? Like, 
I know. Cause he, well, cause I was like, I was trying to think. I was like, could Steve have lifted her up? I don't no, know. Like he was muscly, but he wasn't like muscly. You know, I don't like, think he could like lift lift her. Yeah, he was like, in, dang, like scrawny muscle. He was yeah. just like a little like lean. Yeah, he's like in shape, but like he, yeah. I think he's got the the force. You know, right? Like, yeah, heft heft somebody around, heft another human around. <laughs> but also, who sends their boyfriend to go help their friend out? Like, right? That's just weird. I mean, because here's the thing too: it'd be different if like this entire time like if her and Aiden never broke up and they so because at this point they probably would have been together for almost a year or yeah or close or maybe a little little bit over a year right so uh that would kind of make sense still weird but would kind of make sense but like y'all just got back just got back (laughs) just sending him over to your friend's house to help her get off the floor yeah or whatever like help her with her neck issues like that's just weird bro yeah and I I wrote like Though I'm like honestly, I'd fall in love with Aiden right there too. I'm like, oh, he saved me. <laughs> I know she was kind of looking at him like, oh my god, oh my well, god I want to well, pay I get, I get, I get it. Mm-hmm. She said, she immediately in her head, she was like, oh, Carrie ain't good enough for this guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the fact that he would go over there, like, yeah, he's too good for her. He's like, too good for Carrie. The fact yeah. that he'd go help. So yeah. poor Miranda's in like a neck brace and uh, gets a visit from Carrie so carrie can bitch about her concerns with aiden and she fucking calls her out she's like you brought over bagels you didn't even bring cream cheese you're it just it's all pretense to talk about aiden which it was and I, and I think it's bullshit and it's just like you left me hanging you sent your boyfriend now in all fairness like carrie sure as shit's not lifting another human but like no no sure yeah she that could have been... like helped miranda like get dressed and then yeah, that's what I'm they, saying. it would have been more appropriate for yeah. her to be and here. then maybe they call Aiden and, and they're like hey you know we're stuck uh, she's stuck on the bathroom floor but I got right. her in a robe can you come over and at least get her to the bed like because I physically can't do it because I right. am 98 pounds soaking wet <laughs> with no muscle tone to speak of except abs she got abs I don't know she <laughs> does have abs she does have abs I know what <laughs> the, sh- the, the shopping cardio pays off I guess because yeah. she is in like She's slender good. shape you know yeah. but like I I wouldn't ask her to carry anything <laughs> ah, ah, ah. get you carried away carry? <laughs> you would ask her to carry <laughs> ah. so I'm like um, if anyone's paying attention um yeah so and I, I, and Miranda's like Eight, your, your boyfriend saw me naked and like this is all terribly embarrassing and i mean I, he just I, saw like a, a butt cheek at best yeah like, he wasn't best. he didn't really see her naked i mean yeah. you know that that could have happened on the street if she was wearing a skirt you know the way yeah. he caught it the right he way. didn't see the front which is the more vulnerable yeah. sections sure. right yeah i think yeah. um that's what I would like want to cover up most if it was right, a, which she did with the the, the bath yeah. rug. <laughs> yeah, she put the bag right in her mouth. I was like, oh, girl, yeah, you stepping out of that from the shower and stuff yeah. and all the. Ugh. I need to actually like wash and clean my place because it's I've been sick and uh, you know, I've kept it tidy or whatever. Yeah. But like, hey, yeah, you gotta like vacuum and shit. Yeah, God yeah. damn it, I'm tired. I don't want to do it. Don't yeah, don't <laughs> fall down on your in your bathroom and use your rug in your mouth because that might. It might make might make you sick again. Yeah. <laughs> Autumn feet germ, man. And the kitty feet. No, <laughs> <Yeah>. thank you. <laughs> For the record, I don't want the cat on the kitchen counters as much as humanly possible. I try to keep his Oh no, cat. he's gonna yeah, no, no. Keep the, his ass they, off there. They're gonna get um, there anyway. Either way, that's what they love. He does it while I'm sleeping because sure. I do see I see cat prints on the yeah. fucking gla- glass oh, stove, yeah. but I, I almost always clean it before I cook. And yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh total yeah, that's sidebar. Uh, so that kind of, I, without, I, I think, uh, I want to pause on Miranda there because it kind of gets into Carrie's other concerns and story, yeah. um, while they're arguing. Yes. Um, but they, they leave on good terms more basically. And, uh, what do you call it? And then Miranda enjoy embraces her little life of leisure and takes a little extra time off and is like, oh, I can't come into work. My neck still hurts. Yeah. And that was my point. I was like, this argument's kind of, between her and Charlotte, in some ways, it's kind of dumb because like we said earlier, no one really wants to fucking work work. Yeah. Like, you know, wait, yeah. wage slave their days away. Not that either of these women are wage slaves, but like, no. Miranda works her ass off and it's like, yeah, everybody needs a break, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. He's a, he's a couple of days. Why not? I, and I think with the Charlotte stuff, just real quick too, I think it's sort of the notion that 
um, she maybe didn't love the work, I think, as much as the other girls thought she did. Mm-hmm. Um, in the sense of like, you know, the the good thing is that's always sort of open for Charlotte to go back to. It's kind of a career and stuff like that where she could re-enter it almost at any time in sure. her life. Sure. Um, and I don't think they acknowledged that in a way, but uh, they just make it seem like it's it's once you leave, you can never return, and that's not true. People start new not careers always all true. the time. Yeah, it's, and she, it's a thing too. Is like with somebody with her experience and stuff like that, if she ever wanted to get back in the game, she probably she wouldn't even have to like get in like to work at somebody else's gallery. She could probably start her own. I was gallery. just about to say she could probably start the the Mrs. Charlotte McDougal. <laughs> yeah, Charlotte uh, McDougal Gallery. Gallery. If she Actually, that to. sounds like a gallery that I would go to. Yeah. Although I've watched so many art documentaries on Netflix and other places now, I'm convinced there's no real art hanging in any of these places anymore because it's either stolen or fake. Man, <laughs> yeah, probably yeah. There was a whole what? There was a whole or just one a replica, but just a bunch of replicas about um, a bunch of faked artwork that this huge scam was happening, and they concluded that they're like, we genuinely don't know how many real or fake pieces of these of this handful of artists even exist now they could there could be less real ones than we think or more fake ones than we know like it was super bizarre and I, and I was like is art even a good investment like I don't understand and then the other one was great because it was a museum in Boston that got robbed on St. Patrick's Day and they thought they were fencing the paintings for the IRA and they went all the way to Ireland and interviewed someone they're like no, we didn't get money from the paintings for the IRA. Get the fuck out of here. Come on. <laughs> like, it's such a great, like, sidebar. And then it was, like, basically someone's just keeping them in a basement somewhere in Boston or something like that. But, That's awesome. yeah, I'm convinced art galleries are mostly fake now. <laughs> Probably. Just a stupid, uh, good way to get rich people who don't know what the hell they're doing. Mm-hmm. Like, who's, like, trying to front and pretend they know art. Basically all money. Front. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's get to the main event. Aiden and Carrie. Let's go. My how the turns tables, Carrie. <laughs> yes. Doesn't My man so Aiden good, is does a it? savage, bro. That man is a savage, bro. He is putting her through the ringer in this episode. And you know what? And she, I'm loving she everything. She drove him to it. it I know. I'm loving like it. the type of guy who would do this, but boy, if she didn't fucking drive him over here. Oh, edge. I'm all for it, baby. I'm all for <gasps> it. I'm all for it. So in this episode, in this episode, her and Aiden like have gotten back together. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, oh, but like dear. the worst yeah. thing that could have happened with them starting over did happen. Well, not the worst thing, but probably Second the worst thing. thing. Yeah, eh, it's, it's tied. It's tied up there. I mean, like it's in the top five for sure, definitely. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. while while they're in the middle of having sex, mm-hmm. like he's still inside of her who should call her phone the man himself big hey kid i'm back in town Woo. give me a call shut the fuck i up. mean I, I for the in that moment i did feel bad for gary because it's like fuck I'm like what could she have done about That's that not like, on her. it's like yeah like yeah. she couldn't have done anything however though however <laughs> however i will say this that wouldn't have happened if she wasn't trying to be friends with big why are you trying to be friends with big what is the oh. point of this yeah you know what i'm saying yeah. especially yeah. You know, say like, of course, she didn't know she was gonna maybe get back with dating, but like, again, where did you need to be friends with him for? Like, how has it benefited you in any way? Because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. there's no, I guarantee, if you ask Carrie at this point, what's the benefit of having Big as a friend? She couldn't tell you. Yeah, because I do not, not I do not mean to jump ahead, but sure. while they're arguing at the end, where he he's like, I don't want you to see him again, and she's like, he's always gonna be a part of my life, and I just kept what? writing as what as what? No, no, fuck that. Not even as what. Why? Why that, that, to me yeah. and I put red flags. I'm sorry. Like if I'm talking to you about an ex, the ex that you cheated on me with, and you're trying to make this work again, and I say I don't want you to see him again, and you say no, I'm out. That's yeah. a red flag, baby. Yeah. That's a, like so clearly you ain't trying to make this shit last because if he's more important in your life than I am, yeah. and you're trying to make this work, we're done. Yeah. I don't even know how Aiden even got back in bed with you. I, I'm I like, oh. Even- I'm out. So I'm going to fuck the waitress. We're, sorry, we're, we're so <laughs> far ahead of ourselves. We're like no, fuck that. Ourselves. We're not ahead of our hills because if you watch the goddamn episode, you shouldn't. If you didn't watch the episode, you should be listening to this. Right, right, right. Watch the episode. So, but to to back up, but speaking of 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 
the the getting into bed with her yeah. so she tells she tells the girls about it at brunch and they're like well you know did he keep going and they're like yeah she he finished and so did i and samantha's like oh he's a keeper and i was like amen sister <laughs> he's a keeper and also too like for her she had to finish because she didn't yeah yo that was, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was just because either day even like which here's the day i understand mm-hmm. how difficult it can be because like a lot of shit is going through your brain and like a lot yeah. of the, mm-hmm. the things with sexual pleasure have to do with our mental state yeah. so she's a trooper for that kudos to carrie for like mm-hmm. getting through it and making it happen and like mm-hmm. you know uh, uh uh not putting us digging herself into a deeper hole but yeah you had to do that because if you didn't all kinds of things you don't know mm-hmm. what would have been spiraling and but here's the thing uh even though she did finish it did still get a little 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 dice yes. for your girl she's not in the nook as she calls no. it where she like yeah. when they're kind of sleeping sl- genuinely sleeping together and yes she's like nestled up nestled on his like kind of shoulder arm oh yeah because she said he woke up and he was she he like, was like the on the other side, side of, of the bed. bed yeah which i did not realize how big her fucking bed is i know until, surprisingly yeah i'm like you got a king in there <laughs> Yeah. I got a queen that, in my one bedroom. I'm like, mm, maybe we should get a full. <laughs> yo, fam, I say I got a queen size bed too. I'm like, shit, uh, that's taking it. And the weirdest part room. is I don't even sleep in the middle of the damn bed. I'm so Neither. weird. I sleep on the very like literal edge of the bed. Like Same. I'm about to fall off. I don't know why. I sleep on I sleep on one side too, right? I, I don't sleep in the middle. It's not just one side though. I'm like on the very edge of the bed. It's really <laughs> so you're weird. Just ready, you're just ready to go. Yeah. No, my mom one time was like, do you ever fall out of bed? Because like I think she was checking on me or something. I was like, Yeah, no. And she was like, It's fucking weird. Because <laughs> <laughs> she's like, You're right on the edge, and you just don't, you don't fall off. I was like, No. She's like, Okay. Hey, when you've been doing it for years, your body knows how I to just sleep used, that way. Yeah, right? I just am used to balancing. I guess I don't know. <laughs> Someone gave me a very another female coworker gave me a brief massage at work today, and she was like, Oh my god, you're tense. <laughs> it's like yeah. that's my shrugs i've been doing that's my that's weightlifting just but yeah yeah i that. wish <laughs> um but carrie's like keeps insisting she's like i was hoping we could start fresh without like talking about it and samantha's like oh you gotta leave the past in the past and carrie goes on to wonder like oh how great would it be if there's a way to erase the bad memories i was like oh yeah eternal sunshine of the spotless mind hadn't come out yet yeah, so we I- can all learn that that's actually not a very good idea <laughs> Well, also too, like that's just a, that's just a, it's a, it's a, it's a cop out. Yeah. Like you guys are starting a relationship. Yes, it's, 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 it's like there's baggage there that you mm-hmm. have to unpack. I'm sorry. Yeah. Like there's, y'all should have done that before you even decided to get back together. Like I don't even know how she's like going around saying this is my boyfriend yeah. and y'all haven't even unpacked this. Like this is bad on both their parts. I'm not even gonna put this all on Carrie. Like true. Yeah. Eating himself should have been like, so what are we gonna do about this big situation? Yeah. Yeah. You know that that definitely hurt and like mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying because like they didn't talk about yeah. it he did blow up in her face in the last episode saying like you broke my heart but mm-hmm. like that ain't talking it out that's just yeah. an outburst and so that's kind of what leads to what we see through the rest of the episode which is aiden basically <laughs> torturing carrie yeah with, with uh passive aggressive guilt yeah because like you know the one like one morning like she's like reaching for him and she's like wakes him up and he's like oh i gotta go to the gym and he's like, you don't want me getting soft again and she's like oh, that's okay and he's like well i didn't like it and then she's like can i get a good morning kiss he's like you should brush your teeth yeah, dude it was so funny like he was so she was cool. he was making that girl squirm man yeah like, she was like oh i brought you orange juice he's like cool like <laughs> yeah <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> and she's like so that. desperate to prove she's like practically uh, perfect i i don't like this little moment when she's like hey you know i i'm not smoking and the, would you help me put on these nicotine patches i need like two i got a stressful day and he really slaps the patch on her it's a little oh i didn't like yeah it. yeah like, he smacked it on her she's like, ugly moment. He's like oh i gotta make sure it's all like God, yeah like but that's but, the, but they see that's the but that uh uh uh, uh that's where the problem is, right? Because they're not talking about what's yeah. going on, which is already like a bad side of the relationship. It's like, when are y'all going to talk about what's yeah. going on? And even then, at the end of the relationship, they didn't really talk about it. She just like basically begged him to forgive her. But it's like, how can he forgive you yeah. for that when like the guy is still in your life? Sorry. Like once you said yeah. that you still want the guy in your life, I, there's no way I can forgive you because clearly he means more to you than mm-hmm. what this is. Yeah. and But he was, but as you said, it's, it's on both of them because she's like, are you mad at me? And he's like, 
totally deflects. He's like, why'd you let the milk go bad? Right. And I'm stressed about work and I need right. someone to watch the dog. And she's like, I'll do all that, you know, like, uh, and then he, she's like, do you want to like come here tonight? And he's like, oh, I got guys night. And she's like, can I crash guys night at some point? And he's like, whatever. And yeah. then we get to the bar. And then there's Woo! no guys. There's no guys. There's hey. just some bartender lady. <laughs> Bro, he was torturing her. Like the way he was did, mm. he was given that, he was given the bartender like the look. Like yes. if they, like, I mean, I can understand how Carrie was just like, what the fuck is going on? Because he was giving her to look like if they aren't currently fucking, they definitely have fucked. Like there yeah. was like, there was way too much like sexual energy going on and they were trying to play jacks with fucking jacks, peanuts. And, yeah. and it was the most sexual scene I ever seen in my life. Yeah, like, good Lord. Yeah, I was like, Jesus, what's it's going like on? Like a porno like, over yeah, here. It was, it was so much. He was giving her the, the, the mm-hmm. eye of, yeah. And if I was that bartender though, I would start to feel awkward because they got passive aggressive with Well, that each was other. another thing too that I was going to say. <laughs> like, like low key, oh. that bartender is kind of a bitch because like yeah. you couldn't read the room, bitch. Like you couldn't yeah. tell that like, Something's up here. You know what I'm saying? Like, the there's fuck some out kind of what's of... happening over here. Not even that. It's like, why are you still here? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. clearly, there, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, you know, there was some tension there. And, and yeah, and, there's like know, awkward up, introductions. Yeah, she came up and like kissed him on the mouth, and yeah. he was kissing her. And you're just still sitting there, like, oh, let's play jacks. Oh, let's, let's play jacks. It's twosies and threesies. He's skink. <laughs> like, I, and like, I mean, I, you know, she's trying to assert her fucking confidence, but it's like, mm, yeah, get out of here. you like, also, too, you you looking dumb because clearly you're letting this guy use you to make his girlfriend jealous, yeah. and you're okay with that. Yeah, you too dumb to see that. Yeah, come on, girl, you ain't uh, even had the dick yet. Yeah, how you, how you that dick drunk and you ain't even had the dick yet. <laughs> <laughs> dick drunk, that's a new one. I I just recently learned uh, there's dick dizzy mm-hmm. uh, and dickmatized. Obviously, mm-hmm. it's, it's mm-hmm. the one I've heard the most. But dick drunk, I love dick that. Dick drunk, yep, yep, yep. You can be drunk off of it because she was, man. She was hypnotized. Yeah. She was all up in it. And as I say, he didn't even hit it yet. So like, mm-hmm. damn, girl, take it easy. But and I get he, it though. He is part owner of the bar. You know, what I'm saying it's a come up for her. Yeah, if it's you true. Think about it, you know what I'm One day she's a bartender. She bangs him other times. Maybe she's the GM. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not mad <laughs> about it. Uh, but Aiden's like totally basking in the awkwardness oh, and being a dick. It. He's and, loving it. And, and to be uh, fair, she does deserve some of this. Like, yeah, I just know, wrote, doesn't feel so good. Yeah, does she it, deserves Carrie? a little bit of it. Yeah. I mean, let's be honest. Like, you did bang your ex, and then like had mm. him like he's calling you and shit like that, yeah. which like lets him know that like this guy's still around. Mm-hmm. Not 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 so not a good look, Cherry. Not yeah. a good look. And he says he'll like come by later, but he never does. And she's like, I'm being punished. <laughs> oh, I know. Stone cold, motherfucker. <laughs> that candle was melted, bro. That <laughs> thing was about to, that, that wax was about to leak up to her bed. She was waiting all, all night, night fam. <laughs> I mean, let's not forget when she bumped into, when she Miranda bumped into him and Steve that first time, yeah. post breakup, yeah. he didn't say a fucking word to her. Like Steve's all like, "Hey, how you guys doing?" And these are yeah. the girls we're seeing. Da, 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 da. And Aiden was like, "If it was like a real if looks could kill situation, Carrie'd be stone dead on that street, and and we wouldn't be here for her." Yeah. So then we get to Carrie and Miranda and Carrie's like cop out bagels and all this that and the other thing. But it, they oh wait, we had the walk and the dog. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, because oh, he walks after? Max. No, that was that was that was, uh, was before the, the the bagels. I have it as after. Is it after? Let me it look at my after. notes. It might be after. Uh... All my notes are chronological. Oh, I want to put this out before we talk about that. I, mm-hmm. I forgot because I gotta give a demerit to Aiden. Uh this nigga's nasty. Um <laughs> In the bathroom, he was putting the Q-tip in his mouth, and then he was cleaning his ears. Did you see that shit? No. Ew. Go back and watch it. I he will was not. Little, he put it in his <laughs> mouth. He went. He like rolled it in his mouth to like get it wet, and then he cleaned his ears with it. He did it twice. I watched Ew. him do it twice. I was like, Wait. he put it in his mouth. Like he, what? One end for each ear, right? Yes. Not like okay. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. something. That's still nasty, bro. That's, nasty. that's still nasty. You He's a country so, boy, I guess. Essentially, he was cleaning his ears with spit. Ew! You don't. Just do saying. That. I'm just saying. I don't know if you noticed that. I just, I just saw it in my notes again. I was just like, "Hold on, am I tripping?" Gross. 
dump his ass. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yo, let me tell you something. Any girl that ever did that in my bathroom, which we're done. I'm sorry. I have to break up with you. You're, you're just gonna say, I'm sorry. I can't. I'm gonna I tell know, you. What, I, I'm gonna tell you why it is too. Like, I'm not gonna let you just leave the house and not know what you did. I'm like, yeah, look, just see you it, nasty. Bro. It was the Q-tip thing. Yeah, I don't care if that's judgmental. That's nasty, dude. Because that it means because this is the thing too. Like, this if, if he's doing that around care, that means he does that on the regular. That's like his regular mm-hmm. routine. Like he's been doing that for years, and nobody ain't corrected him on that shit. Why would you put mouth germs in your ear? I don't know. That's how you get ear infections. Fucking people yeah. doing wet willies and shit like that. Ooh. What are you doing, bro? Ugh. And that's like that's morning mouth. I don't even know he even brushed his teeth oh yet. God, that's morning right. mouth. Yeah. Anyway. anyway, I'm sorry. No, Back no, no. That's branding. a valid point. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to, I forgot about that point before we let Aiden get away. That is a, that's a bigger demerit than like making her squirm like yeah. yeah. <laughs> demerit, B. But uh so yeah, Carrie's at Miranda's, they have their whole thing, and they apologize to each other and they're all good. And Carrie says she's worried he's having an affair with the bartender. And Miranda's like, he's not, he's a good guy. And Carrie's like, yeah, he's a good guy. I'm bad. He's torturing me and I feel like I deserve it. And it's like, mm, kind of, I mean. I mean, yeah, you got to take a little bit of this hit. You know what I'm saying? He can't just forgive you right away. Yeah. Especially with like your ex calling and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Because like, how's he mm-hmm. supposed to know? Because you can tell him anything. Like, but the fact of the matter is the fact that that big is calling means something. Yeah. And if you guys are you get, like, you can't still have a relationship with the guy that you cheated on me with. Yeah. I'm sorry. What it's are you talking insane. about? It's insane. The fact that she's like, why is he doing this? Like, are you, she's so fucking delusional. She's like, I don't deserve this. Why is he being like this? I've shown so much. I, you know, I'm like, like, no. Yeah. Like, no. You may, I, I don't think you deserve for a prolonged period to be no. treated like crap or anything like that. But like, you cannot be shocked that he's, treating you this way after that he's still happy, upset about it that he's still upset after what you did like yeah. that's not okay it was you know so anyway so she yeah so then they're walking she's walking the dog with samantha and carrie's like i'm trying to prove him a good girlfriend and samantha's like how long are you gonna punish yourself which is true like you can't they can't sure. go on this way forever because yeah. they will just break up again almost yeah immediately. of course yeah yeah uh and then poor pete the dog has the run- <laughs> runs Ugh. And she brings him back to Aiden, who's flirting with the bartender again. Yeah. And she hands the dog off all angry. And Carrie's like, what are you doing? And he's like, she's just a friend. And Carrie's like, well, why don't you just fuck her so we could both be bad? Which, again, I don't get why she's so upset because your mm-hmm. ex is still calling you. Yeah. So. And you were seeing your ex a handful of episodes ago. And while you didn't, like, you guys didn't hook up during that time. Sure. You were going on regular dates. Like, yeah. You and were dating. And no hookup, but you were definitely dating because you were dating. Was getting jealous of like you being I, with other dudes and yeah. vice versa. So Jasmine might have been off his fucking rocker, but he, right. he did see you like in that one episode, like right. what was happening that this guy who she's quote unquote not dating or seeing really, it's not her boyfriend, but he's trying to pull all the boyfriend moves at the table. Like, mm-hmm. fuck out of here. Yeah, bro. <clears throat> so Aiden finally shows up at her place though and he's like nothing happened but he thought about it and he's I'm like glad he didn't do it because like, I am glad to you know what I'm saying like keep you keep keep it you know keep stay strong bro you'll yeah. get to that level like, yeah you, are, you were being you were savage enough for this episode yeah don't, don't take it all the way you're tiptoeing through the mud don't go ankle deep you know yeah 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 um and she's and he's like i hate that he calls and she's like nothing's happening or will happen again and he's like i don't want you to ever see him again and that's when she says like i can't do that he's in my life and again i'm like as what and what is he in her life as i would have like, walked right on i'd be like well we can't be together so yeah as a friend There's no as like, way as a man how can you expect me as a, just a man in general as a mm-hmm. man with any kind of like self-respect to let you be friends with the guy that you fucked behind my yeah. back yeah what what in as you said like how are you even gonna respect me if i let you do that yeah what benefit in her life is having big around like yeah he, he might kick her money at some point yeah and that's what like, i said and that's what i said it, you know, earlier there. it's like what yeah. is he what if if you were to ask carrie why does he need to be in your life she could not come with a valid reason mm-hmm. other than like i've known him forever no you haven't you only know him what for We'll say for a year's worth of time has passed each season. You met him in season one for the first time. You had no. known him four whole ass years, maybe. Yeah. 
And even then, I'm expanding some timelines, I think. Yeah. yeah. That's not some lifelong on again, off again friend, right? Neighbor, childhood chum. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's not like y'all fucking grew up together, fucking yeah. taking baths together or some shit. He's like a that. family friend you have to yeah. see at like reunions all exactly. the time. Yeah, like you guys' lives don't even really mesh. Like it's, it, it, the a only colleague. time, yeah, the only time he's even in your life is when you guys are together or whatever. Like it's not like him and Miranda built some kind of relationship yeah. or some shit like that. Yeah, come on, stop it, man, stop it. It would be more understandable if like she had cheated with Steve and Steve's still in Aiden's life and in both their right. lives, right? Like, that would maybe be more understandable, would be right. okay, but like at least make some modicum of sense. Exactly, yeah. But instead we're like, he's in my life, that's fucking what? And then she's But like, Aiden still fucking like concedes to that. Like he still uh, Yeah. I talk about uh Nether demerit. <laughs> <laughs> Because and then she does the you have to forgive you know she's like you have to forgive me it's a memorable scene with her repeating it over and mm-hmm. over and he kind of seemingly does and comes in and hugs and then you know finally she works her way into the nook at the end of the episode I'm like you don't deserve the nook you don't deserve the nook you don't deserve you don't deserve that you ain't I mean listen you 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 took your punishment but like you didn't take it well yeah you didn't take it like you understood all the things you fucking did wrong to lead to that point. <laughs> Yeah, she was still acting confused. Like I don't get it. Why is he being Why like is this? Why is he being so mad at me? God, I couldn't. Jeez, Carrie, I don't know. Are you still the fucking the formerly married man behind his back? The like, worst. Maybe the worst. That's part of it. Ugh. I don't know why everybody wants to be a Carrie. She's the worst. Yeah. I said it once. I'll say it again. The worst. What's the opposite of like dickmatized for a guy like? whipped <laughs> okay yeah yeah i was just curious whipped, pretty much. yeah pretty much i mean we that that's been a while that's been around for a very long time which yeah. is pretty pretty solid thing to call a guy like i've heard people say she's got that good good that's like just driving him fucking wild and that's why he's putting up with her bullshit i i let me tell you something let me let me tell you right now i know 100 percent carrie ain't that good at this mm-hmm. she's probably like like she's good you know aesthetically pleasing to mm. look at so that does help in the factor of like enjoying sex with her but like that's a selfish lover you know she ain't like yeah. putting out and shit like that she probably just laying there and take it and like hope that she gets an orgasm out of it mm-hmm. she ain't she ain't doing nothing else and she's a sex columnist please yeah please prudest sex please i've ever met please get her out of here <laughs> anyway tell people where they can find us well they can find us most easily excuse me cat Sorry, my cat is basically on my keyboard right now. Yes, he is. <laughs> He's my handsome boy, though. Uh, you can find us uh, on Instagram at Show Me What Podcast. Most yep. easily, that'll take you to our Facebook, Twitter, uh, YouTube, which we have 102 subscribers now on YouTube. Yay! Cat, look excited. <laughs> we had, we uh, we did lose a couple. I don't know why. We was at 107, then we was at 104. Now we had 102. What happened, y'all? What happened? what happened? Sorry, can't dump up the mic. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe by the time this comes out, it might be different numbers. Might but I, up, watched, but... I looked at it today. It was 107 through the whole weekend, and all of a sudden it was down 104. Now it's 102. Fuck y'all. What's happening? Whoever What's left, happening? fuck y'all. Or, or not, fuck y'all. Please nah, fuck back. y'all. Don't come back. Don't come back. <laughs> don't come back. You can't stay loyal. We don't want you. These hoes ain't loyal. You know what I'm saying? We come to you. You drop an episode every Monday. We've been loyal to y'all. Y'all can't be loyal to us. Fuck you, man. Um, and you can find me and my cat <laughs> if he stops trying to chew the microphone dude <laughs> kill us both um, you can find me at Elizabeth Movies on Twitter, Instagram and TikTok yes and you can find me at uh, Christopher T. Mac on all uh, uh, platforms Twitter, Facebook uh, um, Instagrams and TikTok mm-hmm Oh, oh and be sure to go to oh, yeah. Australia to get your candles, your mm-hmm. re-diffusers, and bath bombs, baby. All that good stuff. And use your uh, promo code Show Me Miss at checkout. That gets you 10% off. Mm-hmm. Uh, and make sure if you do buy, make sure you put a little note in there. Say, hey, we sent no, you. We yeah, sent let you. Let, 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 let know that we sent you. You know what I'm saying? Because, mm-hmm. you know, I want you to know that our customers or our, our, our loyal fans are, 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 are spreading the wealth. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Give us a little shout out. 
and tell your friends about us. Tell them to like and subscribe mm-hmm. and don't unsubscribe. All right. Because we bring you down <laughs> entertainment all the time, consistently good entertainment. There's no reason for you to unsubscribe, baby. Nope. No reason. <laughs> and with that, we'll see you next time.